Uh, good afternoon, folks. How's everyone doing? Awesome. Um, this talk is Build Your Personal Website with Python by Vince Salvino. Um, as stated earlier in this morning opening remarks, uh, please hold off your uh, questions, any comments uh, to until after the talk, uh, where you can either see Vince outside in the hallway or you can reach out to him on any of his social media or any communication channels that, uh, that he has. So take it away, Vince. All right, hi everyone, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, good. So uh, quick, uh, build your personal website with Python. Uh, not something that a lot of people are doing right now, but um, you know, building a website in 2019, what's that look like? Uh, especially if you wanna do a smaller uh, personal website or a blog or maybe a really small company website or something, Lots of choices, right? Uh, the de facto thing out there is WordPress, and it's a fine platform for doing simple websites or personal websites, and it's kind of the de facto that you see probably, I don't know, I would throw a number out there and say probably nine out of 10 websites I see are WordPress. Um, also really popular today are static site generators. Uh, you may have heard of thing, I mean, there's GitHub pages, there's all kinds of JavaScript frameworks for doing this. Um, but what about Python? usually doesn't show up anywhere in the Google search results um, as far as like a tool, a really good website builder tool for um, building your website in Python. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Uh, first, I'm just gonna do a little bit of background about other options out there. WordPress, I mean, WordPress is the granddaddy of CMS. CMS is the content management system. That's the tool that lets you easily just log in, type out your blog post, click publish, boom, it's done. You know, a, a content editor would do that. You might want to do it so you don't have to code something every single time. Um, so what's the benefit of WordPress? Well, it's dirt cheap. The, you know, WordPress hosting's a dime a dozen. You can easily find something for five bucks a month, probably even cheaper, honestly. Um, it's a very much point and click type platform. You log in, you can download themes and plugins and all kinds of stuff and click, 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 you can get something set up, which is why it's so popular. And it is really great for blogs and personal sites. Um, uh, WordPress is written in PHP, but we want Python screen the masses. So uh, we're, we're gonna use something different because we wanna do it in Python. We love Python. So what about static site generators? Well, uh, all the cool kids are doing it. Um, you know, if you find anything you find out there, blog posts, Twitter and stuff, people are like all about this right now. Jekyll, Gatsby JS, Hugo, a few things to name a few GitHub pages. Um, it's easy to do a static site generator, right? Because all you have to do is master JavaScript, use and install uh, Node.js, NPM, uh, provision some S3 buckets, debug your cores rules, set up a continuous integration on your GitHub repository to push to you know Netlify and then deploy that to your S3. It's super easy. Uh, that's sarcasm. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's cool, it's really cool, but it is not necessarily easy. So what about Python? What do we have, what kind of options do we have for Python? Um, Django, Flask, Pyramid, Cherry Pie. I mean, Django and Flask are like the two web frameworks in Python. They're really nice frameworks too, but th that's all they are, they are frameworks you're still gonna have to define your own URL routes, you're gonna have to define your own database, uh, you know, connection strings and stuff like that. So they're great for building web apps, but you will have to definitely roll your own website in Django. So what about a content management system? That's what we want. We wanna be able to log in, type out a blog post, pu click publish and boom, we're done. Um, well, there's a few options out there. There's some, there are some good uh, Python content management systems. They're not super uh, popular, but uh, Plone, Mezzanine, Django CMS, and Wagtail. Um, I would like to speak particularly to Wagtail for a second. Um, I'm really involved in the Wagtail community, and um, I was just at the Wagtail open space two days ago, and um, I'm proud to report that if you go by the flawed metric of GitHub stars, uh, Wagtail has become the most, uh, the number one most starred CMS in Python. So that's really, that's a really cool thing I'm kind of proud to see. Doesn't necessarily mean anything, but uh, it's at least 
people are interested in it. It's a really good CMS. Um, the problem with these Python CMSs is that they are, they still require coding to be usable. So they're not exactly batteries included like WordPress is, where you can click, install, and immediately get up and running. With those, you would have to define your data model, define, you know, you don't get any HTML templating, you have to make all of your templates from scratch, which is probably what you want for a bigger project, but for doing smaller personal sites, it's, you know, there's still a lot of coding involved. So with all that background, um, we built CodeRed CMS. And our goal is to make something more like WordPress, the WordPress experience with Python. We're built on top of um, Wagtail, which is why I'm so involved in it. So um, all of this is open source. You can get, get it on uh, GitHub or uh, pip install. So uh, that's just a little bit of background about what CodeRed CMS is and what, we're, what the goals are and what we're going to do with it. So uh, I, I promise that this is going to be mostly more, um, more tutorial than talk. So if you have, I should have said this first, but um, if you want to follow along and have your laptop out or something like that, fire up a fresh virtual ENV and we will, we will build a website. So. Live demo, what could go wrong, right? Says everyone ever. So uh, fun, fun story, I actually crashed and burned pretty bad at um, whoops, doing, a try, doing a live demo. Um, let me try and get out of my, lost my screens here. Nope, not that one. OK. OK, so. Zoom this way in so everyone can see. So I'm just going to fire up a um, fire up a virtual env here, and we're going to pip install CodeRed CMS. I've already done that because um, I don't know how the Wi-Fi is going to be. So you would just do pip install CodeRed CMS, all one word. So, so that's what we would do. Uh, once you do that, uh, and all of this is on the docs, we're just gonna um, we're going to install it. So code red CMS start, and I'm gonna make a new site. I'm just gonna call it um, Pi Ohio. So that's set up a site for us. I can probably zoom out a little bit on this. Whoa. Okay, the zoom did not did not work that well. Um, so this gives us a few instructions here, which kind of got uh, janky because I was zooming in and out. But um, So I'm just going to go to the directory that it created. It created one called PyOhio. Um, I'm going to run python manage.py um, migrate to set it, set it all up. Now I've gotten a lot of feedback that people would like to have a GUI for this. And it's something that we've talked about making a, a GUI that you can kind of guide you through this. Because there are, unfortunately, four or five steps you have to do to start it out. Once we get it started, we won't really have to code. But there are a couple steps. Step, uh, step three, python manage.py create super user. This is going to give us someone to log in with, super user. And I'm just going to name mine admin. Yes, I know it's a bad password. And uh, now I'm going to run it. OK, so now we're getting into the good stuff here. Run server, fires up a local development server. This is all kind of like stock Django, by the way. So if anyone is familiar with Django, you'll feel right at home. OK, so we have it installed and running now. Let's see what we got. Localhost 8000. OK, there's not really anything here. I see there's a title Pi Ohio up at the top. So let's log in. To log in, you just go to the slash admin URL. And it's asking me to sign into my new website. I'm just going to use that username and password that I made a minute ago. OK, and now we have this fired up and running. So this is 
very much uh, what Wagtail looks like. Uh, CodeRed CMS is kind of just a lot of uh, functionality and features on top of Wagtail to make it easy to use without having to code anything at all. So let's start with our website. Okay, we saw that home page before. Over here, we have some pages. Oh, and by the way, I do have kind of a guide I'm just going to go off of. So install and set up, we did that. Okay, let's set up a logo, a brand, and just go through some settings here before we do anything else. So we'll walk into settings. We have a layout here. And we have a few options right up front. Let's set our logo. And I should have found a good logo. Actually, I, I have one from something else I can use. I'll use the logo I use from uh, DjangoCon 2018. Upload that. OK, so I got my logo here. We're going to save that. And let's see what our, oh, there's the logo. It showed up already. Let's see what our, our site looks like. Localhost 8000. Cool, we got a logo up there. All right, we're off to a good start. Um, we, can, we can play with the uh, uh, nav bar a little bit, light and dark. We can add some CSS classes and stuff here, some basic options we can do. Uh, we could pull in a, a theme uh, from like a bootstrap. So this is all built using bootstrap CSS, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, so you get the grid and everything kind of out of the box and kind of the, the stock bootstrap styles. So uh, we get a little bit of that. Okay. Uh, logo, brand, and settings. We can also change the name. So up here, you might notice it just says PyOhio because that's what we created our, our directory with. Um, I'll zoom this in a couple, too. But uh, let's, let's change the name to be a little bit more friendly. So we'll go into the settings, sites, and here's our localhost site. We can change the site name, Pi. Ohio 2019. Save that. And now on our page here, um, it will show Ohio 2019. Okay, so we got that there. Um, now let's uh, actually put something on this home page because it's just completely empty. So we're going to go over to pages here. And uh, everything is structured in sort of a tree structure. So, um, you know, the home page, you can create sub pages below that. But for now, I'm just going to edit this home page. And uh, if you've ever played with Wagtail uh, CMS, then you'll see that this UI looks, I mean, it's exactly Wagtail. We've just added, we've added uh, some stuff onto it. So we have our title here. It's just home. I'll change it to Welcome to Pi, Ohio. And we've got this body here. So Wagtail uses something called a stream field. And it's sort of a visual-ish way of adding content. Now, with Wagtail, you have to define all of this yourself. So we have already gone ahead and defined several things in CodeRed CMS. Um, one being the two most common things you'll probably use being either a hero unit to do a big flashy uh, kind of picture or responsive grid row to just start putting things in a grid. So let's add a hero unit. We'll click on that. We'll pick an image for it. And we'll go back to my talk. I just found some random stock images here. And let's add some text content to it. So everything is kind of in a grid because of Bootstrap. So we're just going to do one column. And we'll just add some text here. Welcome to Pi Ohio 2019. So let's just, so we added an image and we added some text uh, to a hero unit. Let's preview and see what that looks like. All right, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Let's add a button right below that. 
So in this stream field, we can have all kinds of kind of normal content pieces that you would expect uh, to see on a website. Uh, the text gives you kind of a rich text field. The button link uh, will give us a button. So I'll do a button. I'm just going to set, you could link it to a page or a PDF document. Uh, I'm just going to set it to kind of go nowhere right now. Button title, learn more. Let's preview what that button looks like. All right, and there's our button. Now that blue doesn't really look good on there, uh, and because we're using Bootstrap, that's the primary color. But so let's just change it from our primary to maybe a light, a light colored button. And there's the color of the button. A little bit more readable against that image background. So. Um, got that on the home page. Let's add uh, one other thing down here, a new section. And we're just going to do a two column grid. Column one will be some text, maybe, that has our address. I actually have no idea what the address is here, but uh, I'm just going to say Ohio State. The Ohio State, yes, my bad. I, I promise, I am, I promise I am from Ohio. Okay, so that's one section. We'll make this a heading here. And just for, just for future reference, make that one. <laughs> Okay, so let's see here. This is uh, our column. That's our column. Let's add another column below that. And uh, automatic size is fine. Let's add a Google map. Now, if I had the address, this might be more accurate, but. Hopefully, Google can find that. Let's preview it and see what we got. Okay. There is our, there is our uh, join us, and I think, I hope I have Wi-Fi. Looks like it's loading still. There it goes. So we got our map here, and we got our directions over here too, on our home page. Okay, I I'm satisfied with this for now. Let's leave the home page. So we're done. We've been previewing it this whole time. We could now save it as a draft, or we can pop in here. Um, if you're building a larger site, you can do moderation and have like an editor submit, you know, an editor would not be allowed to publish or like an author, and then the author would be able to submit for moderation, and the editor could approve it. We don't really need that for now. We're just going to publish it right away. So publish. OK. My home page has been published, and of course, there's a typo in it. Um, all right, so my home page is here. If I click on the logo, just right here on the at the home page, got my home page. Nice. For a personal site, you probably want to do a blog, or at least even if you had a company site, you would probably want a news feed or something for press releases. So let's make a blog page. We also have the blog page built in by default. So. I said it's a tree structure, so this is the home page. I'm going to click on that, and it takes me to the home page, and I have nothing below the home page here. So I'm going to add a child page, and I want it to be an article landing page because we're going to have blog articles underneath here. We also have form or built in, and there's lots of other built in ones too, but you do need a tiny bit of coding to uh, add, kind of just copy and paste the snippet in to activate some other ones. So I'll get into that if we have time. OK, so this is going to be my blog. I'm just going to call it blog. Um, I can set the URL and stuff here under SEO. So I'm just going to do blog. And the title The title of my page is blog, but I could, I could override that title and, and keep it saying blog here. But I could have it display as my blog or something so that the, uh, you know, to get that metadata in there and the search description um, for the SEO, for Google uh, search previews and stuff. 
So uh, blog. And I'm not really going to put anything else here. I'm just going to make a page called blog. Publish. So if I go to that now, well, I can preview it from here. View live. I got slash blog, the title of my page, and that's it. There's nothing else on here. Notice it has inherited all of the style and the logo and stuff from the main site. So let's add another child page under here, and this is going to be my blog post. Now you'll notice that when I click uh, add child page, the first time it let me pick underneath the home page, do I want a blog landing page, do I want a form, do I want everything? I created an article landing page. Since I'm making a, a child page of my blog page, it knows that I'm only going to be allowed to make blog posts under here. So I'm not going to be able to have slash blog and then put a contact form under there to keep things nice and organized. We're just going to put blog posts under here. So um, let me, let's make a blog post. And we have some fields predefined here. Of course, you can customize these fields with code, which I'll go into a little later if we have time. But to start out, um, I'll pick an image, upload another one. Completely random image, no, uh, you know, no connection between Meerkats and Ohio State University. Um, caption. some stuff in. Now the author I can pick to use my logged in account which is just called admin down here. Um, so I can pick that account or uh, most more likely than not I might just want to put something else in here. So I'll just put my name in there. And I can set this to be any date I want. I'll set it to today. Actually how many of you have ever done this? We're going to set it to yesterday because that's when we were going to publish, but we just never got around to it. So once again, in the blog here, we've got the stream field. We can add all that same good stuff that we wanted to add before. We could add image carousel, a modal, um, some basic stuff, a, a download link for a, a PDF or something. So I'm just going to add some text here. You know you're a web developer when you've memorized that line. So uh, let's preview our blog, our blog post. OK, cool. We get a little bit of style out of the box here. Um, we've got our meerkats. We've got our title, the author, and the date, and our content. Um, so yeah. And let's, OK, so let's publish that. Publish my blog. OK. So I've created three different pages here now. I have the home page, Welcome to Pi, Ohio. I have my blog page, and underneath my blog page, I have a blog post. Just to illustrate the concept, let's make one more blog post so we can at least see a couple of them under there. I'm going to create another child page under my blog. I'll pick a different image. set the author to this here. Well, I'll keep it consistent, I guess. Publish date. We'll set this one to be published uh, in the past. Yeah. So this one, even though it's the second one we're making, it's actually going to be the oldest one. Um, and we'll set this to be And we'll publish this as well. OK, so I just published two blog posts. So I got my home page, my blog page, and two blog posts under here. Let's just go back to our home page. OK, so we don't actually see that blog anywhere. There's no menu for it. There's no uh, nothing. Let's go to the blog page and see where that is, which was slash blog. OK on slash blog, it's going to show us uh, a listing of our blog posts ordered from newest to oldest. 
and we can click on one of those and jump into the blog page. But we want to see that on the home page. So how can we get a preview of these on our home page so that people can find it? Well, two things that come to mind are, one, let's add a menu up here at the top, and two, let's show a preview of these on our home page. Okay, so we blog. Let's, uh, let's add a link to the nav bar and flesh out the home page a little. So let's go back to our home page. I'm going to edit my home page. And while I'm in here, I might as well fix up that title. And here's all my other content. I'm just going to create a new section down here below the map. And we'll just do a grid. Everything's always in a grid. One column. And we should have a block called Latest Pages. That will show us the most recent pages that have been published on the site. Now, we might not want to show all the pages that have been published. Like if the home page shows up, we don't want to show the home page on the home page itself. So we're going to define this and say, I only want to show pages that belong to my blog. So the parent page must be blog. Um, this would allow you to do categories or something if you wanted to set up like categories. Uh, show, show a preview, sure, why not? Number to show, the first three. OK, let's preview what that looks like. So I'm previewing my home page. I've got this. And I got, OK, my two blog posts down here. Nice. Let's just fix up that style a little bit. Maybe I'll add a title above here with another column and say, from the blog. Um, my latest pages block that I created, I'm going to pop in here and change that to a different template. So I could have one latest pages block that maybe is a simple list, and another one that is designed for articles we will do um, card deck of articles. And let's preview, make that look a little bit nicer. OK, cool. We got from the blog in our column, and we got uh, our two blog posts below that here. Let's actually change that to be. So I made two separate columns. I want this first one to be the full row. I'm going to publish that. And let's just go back to the home page here. OK. From the blog, I got my two blog posts. Nice. Last thing I'm going to do is just add a, the link to the blog up at the top. And for that, I'm going to go into um, Snippets, let's make a nav bar. The nav bar goes at the top of the site. We can also do a footer in here as well. I'm going to make a navigation bar. We'll call it main menu. And we're just going to add a link to a page with sublinks. So I'll call it uh, blog. I'm going to link it to my blog page. And I'm feeling dangerous, so let's show child pages, too. OK. Let's check out our site now. Nice. We got our blog link here. If we click on that, we got our sub pages. Um, we've also got our blog posts down here at the bottom. We can click through to those, and um, we can, custom we can uh, see our blog. So I didn't even get into any coding at all today. We just built this whole thing from scratch. Now, of course, it's built on Django. It's built on Wagtail. They have really good documentation. We have, we have pretty decent documentation for CodeRed CMS as well. And uh, you can very easily make your own custom page types that basically are just Django models. That's it. And uh, you can make your own HTML templates for all of this. So you could completely override everything. But right out of the box, we just give you a simple experience that you can code with. Uh, it's completely open source, so check us out on GitHub and uh, make a pull request, make a documentation update. Uh, we love it. So github.com. 
And uh, it's a really easy way to do, to do um, a personal blog or a personal website with Python. And if you want to code it, you can go in and code it. You can add pip packages and whatever you want. Or you can just uh, you know, run it stock as is. So I hope you're able to get something out of this. Um, hopefully someone, if maybe someone was following along, you're able to get your own personal site uh, up. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be out in the hallway. I think we're at time. So uh, thank you.